uh, ninth grade lit, and we are beginning our discussion of Song of Roland. So, uh, question number one: um, What is the conflict in the story, Zach? Just tell me what the conflict in the story is. It's question number one: um, Between the French and the Muslims. That's a good start. Yes. Um, yeah, they've been fighting for seven years. That that helps. Uh, Who's winning? Muslim. No. The French have won every. The French have won everything except one city, Saragossa. Um, and then number two, what is foreshadowed in the last line of the first left say, Alex? You won't escape the room that awaits. And who is he? Uh, not Blankerman. Charles. Charles. I'm sorry, Marcelli. Marcelli. Yeah. All right. All right. Number three. Tell me about Blankendren, uh, Mariah. Sorry. Mariah. <laughs> Blankendren, number three. Question number three. Um, I honestly did not. Okay. <laughs> Zach. I mean, no, oh. It's okay. He's the one who has the plan to save Marcellius. And Marcellius is about to be exterminated by Charles and by Charles. But yeah, Blankendren is going to save him. Yeah, the plan. Um, and what role is it? Obviously, a counselor. Number four. Um, we haven't talked about that. Okay. What is the advice? And we did read the second. Did we read the second or the third um, lesson? Did we read the third lesson? No. On page 52? No. All right. All right. So let's start. Hey, guys, it's too much talking. If you have a question, ask it. Yeah. What's the second question? What's the first? How many times do we have to do it? I'm just getting my stuff out. Look at the recording. I'll just leave it. First question, French. Second question. It's the French one. All right, wait a minute. Somebody tell Ian what the answer to the question number one is. French and Muslims. Yeah, that's The French and the Muslims have been fighting for seven years. What's the answer number two? Well, we'll get to that. Let's make sure you get number one down. Wait, have we answered number four? Let's, we're on number one right now for the second topic. So. All right, Zach, give, give him the answer to number two or anybody who needs it. We won't escape the room. I don't even know the answer. Zach. Question number two. Um, is it um, <laughs> the orchard like when? It's foreshadowed. What's foreshadowed? By the look at the first line of um, the first lesson. You don't remember. We just did it, but he we're going to escape. Gonna... Who won't escape? Um, Marcellus. Right. Okay. All right, number three. Who's Blankendren? Tell us who that is. John Carter. <laughs> Sorry to have to bother you. <laughs> I'll try not to make a habit of it. <laughs> you know the answer? Number three. No. Right, somebody tell them the answer to number three. Huh. He's the only one who has a plan to save Right. He has a plan, and he's a he's a counselor. Um, we do need to get, you know, we have a 45 minute class period and I know you're 14, but I, I treat you like you're 18. That should yeah. be a compliment. And, um, you know, not talk down to you or to, let's do this. Let me talk slowly so you can follow. Um, you've got to do your part, which is listening. Um, all right. So we are on number four. We can't answer four until we read let's say three and Huck is going to do that for us. By the way, there are five elements to his plan. There are five things he suggests. It's a, it's a complicated plan. Um, the, the, the problem is we're about to, I, I like Huck's word, we're about to be exterminated. You know, he's about to kill us all. And we don't want that. So how are we going to avoid that? And Blank, he said, got any, anybody got any ideas? Nothing except for one guy. And that's Blank. What's that? All right, so if you'll read uh, Blankendren's answer. Blankendren's wise amended the famous sword. He was for valor, a mighty knight with resolve, and such of wit for a council of war. He tells the king, be you afraid that 
a beard for naught, uh, for naught, but send to Charles his pride and his wrath, your faithful servant and your friendship henceforth. Promise his uh, promise him lions and bears and hounds for lore, seven hundred camels and a thousand new hawks, four hundred pack mules with gold and silver store, and fifty wagons, a wagon train to form, whence he may give his soldiers rich reward. Say in this land he has made enough war to ace in France. Let them look this book. Let him go home once more. And Michael Nuss will follow to his court. There you'll submit unto the, the Christian law and be his man by faith and will be sworn. Hostages too. If for surety he call, you'll tell him have ten, maybe a score. Where good he sends the son of our lives have borne. die there therefore better by far the heads of them should fall than we should lose honor and state and all and be reduced to beggarly and scorn all right so there are the question is uh who is he we did that one so number four what advice does blank and Jim give to our suing there are five things that basically he promised if he said you need to do these five things what is the purpose of doing these five things to stop the war right just so that the war will end and for ends where's Charlemagne gonna go he's gonna go home and so they're trying to stop the war without being annihilated and they want to uh, they want to get rid of Charlemagne you know we don't want this army in our country so Alex give me one uh, he has to promise him lions and bears and hounds yeah, what's that about? Giving bribery. Price. Yeah, it is bribery, but these are just gifts. You know, they're not war animals, uh, and a lot like Hannibal's elephants or war horses. They're just kind of entertainment. So give them these animals. That'll be one thing to bribe him. I need another one. Andy. Right. Keep looking. I need another one. Yeah, Alex. 700. Right. We're going to put that in the same category of the animals, but there are lots of animals. Hawks and camels and lions and so forth. Uh, Jackson. 50 wagons. What, what seems to be on those wagons? Hostages. Gold and silver. Right. Treasure. All right, so animals, treasure, and what, is, what, is he in, what does he think Charlemagne's going to do with that treasure? It's what all kings do. Pay his soldiers. Right. He's going to pay his soldiers with that. I need three more. Okay. Yeah, great. Right. Well, um, follow to his court and he'll submit to the Christian law. Yes. And tell him you're going to become a Christian. That'll get him. You know, like, if you really want him to believe you, uh, tell him you'll become a Christian. Okay, so is this, is this French? We're in the Muslim camp right now. This is Blankenjian talking to Marcellian. So, become a Christian. That'll really get him. Right. Two more things. Uh, yes. Isn't there something about giving his like children to be married? Or well, something? as hostages. That's what the word surety refers to. So in other words, and the fifth one was your friendship. That's the first thing he mentioned. Tell him, you know, you'll be his friend, his ally, however you want to put it. Uh, you'll serve him, almost like a vassal serving the Lord. So those are the five things. And the idea is, if he gets those five things, he'll, the war will be over. We'll admit you won, you won, and you can leave. And, but you're not gonna show up. There's no way Marcellian is gonna show up in France and say, I wanna become a Christian. So when that happens and he doesn't show up, um, Charlemagne's gonna kill those hostages. And who are those hostages? Yeah, the children. They, they're the kings. They're the Marsilians' kids, maybe, and Blankenjian's kids. Uh, they're, you know, somebody valuable, and so they're willing to sacrifice their own children. He says that in the next. Uh, he says that in the next uh, lesson. So we can add. We just answered number four. That's the advice. 
And then number five, uh, how about Alex? We'll come up this row and then move on. So if you'll do four. Uh, walk, like, like to drink. I swear by my right hand and beer that flows around my dribble span. Straight away, straight away you'll see the Frenchman's host is there. They'll hurry home to France, their native land. When each within his favorite haunts is back, Charles and his chaplain ape the busiest span. And their miracle holds high feet that Michael Miles. The time will pass, the price an hour elapse. No news of us, no message will be had. Years is the king of cool hearted man. Our surety's heads will smite off with the axe. Better than their heads that should fall into their laps, than that fair span should fall out from our hands. And we should suffer grave losses and mishaps. The painters say there is some truth in that. So, so right. he's saying, like, better a few lives are dead than all of That's right. Being That's painted. question number five. But what does that tell you? He says, we're, we're, if, if we lose our sons, no big deal. It's better that we lose a few sons and keep our country. Um, and it's your opinion here, because it asks you, do you agree with that statement? But either way, what does it say? Um, what does it say about Blankenton and the Muslims? That they're willing to sacrifice their Right. Now, remember, they're not, the children aren't volunteering to join the army and they go and fight a war and die for their country. That's not the scenario. The fathers are sending their sons as hostages. You can have him. Um, I don't know if they know or the sons will know that they're going to be, basically, they're, they're going to be killed. So that's a little different. And it says something about the men. You can decide what that says. But it's not a compliment to them. All right, Pilar, uh, number five. Um, um, yeah, uh, stanza five. Within myself I entered the dirty gate, and saw the corners of the metropolis crowd gate, as during the morrow in the dream throughout the country. And garland long beard and beer long bouquet, and macaroon pants on full cafe, real hard. Okay, pause right there. That's a list. You see that list? There are 10 names on the list. So that's a catalog. He tells us everybody that goes on the mission, they're going to go to Charlemagne and offer him these terms. Human be free. Then Michael chose the king to stay with say, Baron, my lord, bid you to your tavern. He spent that siege full of silver to abdicate. Very So they, what, what are they going to get for going on this mission? Yeah, they're going to get uh, rewarded for it. And why do they take olive branches? As a sign of peace. All right. What what might a, an army do today if they were approaching in in peace to have a parley? What might they carry with them? White flags. Yeah. So we don't use the same symbols, but we use symbols. Uh, a white flag would be that. Uh, okay, that's number five. We'll read number six. And how about uh, Jane? Okay. <clears throat> Mark saw the king for often a siege. He felt as in my barren goat's heat. Bear in your hands the boughs of the olive tree. On my behalf, King Charles will meet the feet. For his God's sake, the show will be clemency. Spare this once and in truth you shall not see. Ere I shall I shall see him without the Valdivia. To roll of Christ, I have been a bearer of peace, and say to Mark, I will leash Leishman. B. I have sent him surety if thus he shall decree, both winter and future peace, no darker fate. Have any of you noticed the AOIs here? We talked about it. This day, there's one after the first stanza. There's one after the third stanza. Yeah, it was like Greek letters. Yes. Somebody said it looks like a sorority, a fraternity. Uh, maybe they are Greek. No one knows. Where is that? I'm sorry. It's in, 
Yeah, right at the end of six, right at the end of five, right at the end of seven in the margin. Uh, all right, so we'll go to um, Becca. Brazilian sent for 10 mules white as snow. They get that first centurions? Uh, probably Sotillas. Sotillas came to stay. Their saddles silver, their bridles all of gold. Now are they mounted, the men who are to go. All in their hands the olive branches hold. They came to Charlin. Carlin. Carlin. Who's Carlin? Charlemagne. Charlemagne. Yeah. They also called Charles. Uh, I'm sorry, I just had to make this point. I said yesterday that characters have more than one name. You realize you have more than one name. It's not it's not that unusual, you know. They just take Charles, Carlin, and Charlemagne, but you you have a nickname, you have your first name, you have your middle name. Someday you may just be called by your last name. That might be confusing 150 years from now when people say, why do these people have so many names? Anyway, go ahead. Okay. Um, Sorry, Sorry. 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 So we already know the answer to this question. Are, are they, are they going to fool Charlemagne? Will Charlemagne agree to this deal? No. Well, what does it say? They'll trap him somehow, for it is fated, so. Well, they'll, the, it, he will agree, because it's fated. Yeah, yeah, even though it doesn't make sense. All you have to do is take this one city, and you're finished. You can go home as victor. Why would you quit that? But he does, or that we think he will. I'm confused. Yeah. Um, that was the search number six. Um, no, not thought, yet. I thought you were answering. Yeah, not yet. Let's read eight and then we'll. By the way, where is where are they now? Where's this group of mules and those ten riders? Where did they just left? Um, Saragossa. Where are they now? They're at their desk. It says. Um, yeah, they're already there. Um, they came to Carlin that has transit control. So it didn't take long. There's very few transitions. It's like, we're here, now we're here. Now we're here. You know, they don't spend a lot of time. Like in The Hobbit, most of the book is the journey. But here, the journey is. Is that the answer to six? Uh, let's read one more, and then we can answer. So we'll go to Chris. Yeah, but if you wanted it to rhyme with near, well, how would you pronounce it? Um, Probably Olivier. Olivier Samson, the Duke, and his Anside. Anside, the Fear. Jeffrey Danjou. And what? What is that word? Danjou. It's like D A N J O U. For, so Dan, yeah. Danjou. Danjou. Danjou, the king, Gaul of the Near. Good. <laughs> and Spear is who. Checkerboards. Checker, oh, checkerboards are reared to entertain the elders, lords revere. A uh, young bachelor to sport uh, with swords and spear, venice and pine beside an a gland spear. A foul stool stands all of the red gold clear. A fair France he sits the king of fear. White are white are his locks and silver are his beard. His body noble, his countenance severe. If any seek him, no need to say lo here. From off, from off they, from off they speed. Slip down the messengers. Um, well did they 
Good. Yes. Like, it's just weird if, like, most all the words, like, in, in, like, here, and, like, in this paragraph. What, it, what, why is that? Did you notice what he said? The, the words end with the same sound. That is because it's, a, it's rhyme. It all rhymes. At least slant rhyme. You know, it doesn't have, that's a complete rhyme, but uh, Some rhyme. that gets kind of old, doesn't it? Yeah. I think it's kind of, I mean, you got 20 lines here, and they all have the same. Can you imagine translating it, having to come up with a word that sounds like that? Yes? Uh, what, what's the verse set? Sure. Yeah, we're here there. Um, Ian, read six. Um, how does the setting, mode, and tone shift between section seven and eight? Okay, where are they now, as opposed to in the previous? They're in France when they were in their own. Well, they're not in France. They're still in Spain, but they're in a different city. In Spain. Um, Cordoba is where they are now. So, Cordoba. Carlin is Charlemagne. So just put it Well, we're just part of that. For, for, they're, now they're in Cordoba. They just left Saragossa and they're traveling to Cordoba. That's the setting. Mode, I'm not sure what I mean by that, but I'll skip it. Wait, I'm confused. So, wait, so Marsilia went to Carlin and then it shifts to Car Charlemagne. Okay, the book starts off in Saragossa, and they send a party, a group of people, to Cordoba, and in Cordoba is where Charlemagne is. And remember, Charlemagne and Carlin are the same person. Uh, what is this shift in tone? Like, what was the tone of of um, Marcillian's meeting? Yes. What's the tone of this group? They're happy. Very good. They're cheerful. Yes. And remember, what? why do these two scenes mirror each other? How do they mirror each other? The first scene started next to a town, in an orchard, under a tree, with a king, and with his army. The second scene starts in a different city, in an orchard, under a tree, with a king, with his army. Don't you see how those two things are exactly the like, except they're different cities, different kings, and different armies? That's what mirroring is. You have the same setup, the same situation. Does that make sense to everybody? How about nine? How do we go to that? Um, for them all, like, and grin forward stood and hailed the king. God give you his grace to you, the glorious God to whom worship is due. Thus speaks the king, Marcellian, great in rule. Much hath he studied the saving faith and truth. Now it is well he would send you in suit. Lions and bears, leash greyhounds, not a few. Seven hundred camels, a thousand falcons, few. And gold and silver, born of four hundred miles, mules. A wagon train of fifty carts to boot, and store enough of golden besides good, wherewith to pay your soldiers as you should. Too long you've stayed in this land to our roof. To Aix in France return you at our suit. How do you say that? Thither. Hither. You ever heard of hither and thither? Here is hither, there is thither. Thither my liege will surely follow you and will become your main your man in faith and truth and at your hands hold all this realm in view with lifted hands to god as god to him pursue then bows his head and begin and begins to brood okay um he lies he lies to um charlemagne what what is the lie that he lies Did you pick up on the law? He's talking, Blankendrin is talking to Charlemagne and he says, turn back to page 55. He says in the second line, God give his grace to you. Right. The glorious God to whom worship is due, thus speaks the king Marsilian, great in rule. Much hath he studied the saving faith and truth. Is that true? 
No. No, he's lying. He hasn't studied the Bible. Um, he's lying to me. And so he offers the king, listen, we'll give you all this stuff and cash, you know, he says Byzance or Byzance, that's cash, like coins and things. And you, you can pay your soldiers and get out. Go home. Come on now. You've had enough. You win. Congratulations. Get out of here. You know, that kind of thing. Um, again, what do you think Charlemagne should do? He should stay. He should stay and fight that out. And you've already gone this far. But how do we know Charlemagne is at least thinking of it? Well, because A, the prophecy, or not the prophecy, yeah. but the, it's stated that very good. But what does it say? Then bows his head, and so begins to brood. He and about it. he starts to think. Listen to the next thing, number 10. The emperor bowed long time with downcast eyes. He was not a man hasty to reply. You're thinking, you're not gonna, you're not gonna believe this guy, are you, Sir Romain? But want to speak only when well advised. When he looked up, his glance was stern and high. He told the envoys, fair is your speech and fine, yet King Marcel is foe to me and mine. And all these words and offers you recite, I find no warrant where I should confine. He says, nothing you've told me makes me believe you. I, he basically said, I don't believe you. That's what he says. Then he says, sureties for this. Miss Aaron replied, 10 or 15 or 20 will provide. One of my sons I'll send on pain to die. Others yet nobler you'll have as I divine when, when in your palace you feast, your, you solemnize the great St. Michael of peril by the tide. He'll follow you, on that you may rely. And in those baths God made you by his might, he would turn Christian and there would be baptized. And Charles says, hmm, he yet may save his soul alive. So of all the things, the money didn't do it, the camels didn't do it. It's the fact that he's going to be yeah, what if somebody promised you that? I mean, they're lying to you, but what if they promised, yeah, I want to come to church so I can be saved. Well, you'd believe them, and you'd, you'd take him, but I think that Ch Charles here should not believe him, but he does. He said, hmm, you know this time they actually become a Christian? That's great. So remember, you're working on your vocabulary for Thursday, and we'll keep reading tomorrow. I was, Sorry, what was six again? Six is he's is now no longer in Saragossa, they're in Cordoba, and is, uh, as Mariah said, they're happy. The French are happy. Uh, the